How safe are antipsychotic drugs? You know, it really only takes a little bit of reading to realize these drugs are very, very unsafe. If you look at any package insert of any antipsychotic drug, you're going to see a long list of side effects. If you pull up clinical pharmacology, which is software for clinicians, pharmacists, nurses, psychiatrists, etc., and you type in any antipsychotic medications, Zyprexa, Geodon, Vega, Abilify, Haldol, whatever, you are going to get a long list of side effects that are pulled from clinical trials, from the drugs, from the manufacturers themselves, that show pretty much every potential side effect in the book. When patients ask me, hey, this is, this is what I'm experiencing, and it's some sort of side effect could be anything. I tell them it's possible because after reading these long list of side effects, literally anything is possible from a granulocytosis, a low white blood cell count, to cardiac arrhythmias, to weight gain, to dyslipidemia, everything in the book, seizures, constipation, everything, everything is possible on antipsychotic medication. I've seen a number of, and they tend to be female patients, gain a pound a day for about 90 days. So imagine you take yourself now, you look in the mirror, you recognize yourself, and 90 90 days you've gained 90 pounds and we're not talking about muscle we're talking about sheer fat 90 pounds of fat on zyprexa and clozapine they come into these admission units they're maybe a little hypomanic they maybe raise their voice a little oftentimes they're not a danger to themselves or to the other people they're started on antipsychotics in an attempt to stabilize them so that they can proceed and understand their charges their legal charges and then you see them six months down the road they're stabilized and they look like just drooling tomatoes that sit in the day hall very lethargic blunted affect they have no spontaneity whatsoever no conversational skills whatsoever they're completely zombified if you read this book here anatomy of an epidemic i highly recommend it it's by robert whitaker you'll learn that when they first discovered chlorpromazine which is also known as thorazine they found that in rats they would put them in a cage they would electrify the cage the rats would jump off the cage as would you and i they would then give the rats thorazine and they noticed that when the cage became electrified they didn't move. My hunch is this is probably why historically people thought people diagnosed with schizophrenia had higher pain tolerance because the meds themselves just blunt everything. They blunt your experience of the world. They blunt your emotions. They sometimes can blunt the psychosis you might be experiencing, but they overall just dampen your experience in general. So imagine, just imagine you took your experience now and you just dampened it. Everything is less colorful. Everything's less bright. Sounds are less sonorous. I don't know. I don't know how to describe sounds that are boring. Boring. Artwork maybe doesn't appeal to you. Music doesn't appeal to you anymore. Just the world has kind of lost its color. If you read this book here, Toxic Psychiatry by Peter Bragans, you can read about all the damaging effects that antipsychotics have. Peter Bragan, if you haven't if you haven't read him, check him out. You can Google him. You can go onto his website. You can read court cases where he testifies against psychiatrists for malpractice. You can read about all sorts of interesting stuff in his book. One thing that really stood out in toxic psychiatry is there was a study done where they looked at two groups of people, one who had had frontal lobotomies and the other who had been on antipsychotics for years, and clinicians could not differentiate the two. That's because antipsychotics cause a chemical lob lobotomy if taken long term. So we should feel a little scared knowing that frontal lobotomies and antipsychotics over the long term cause pretty much the same thing. They damage the frontal lobe. And of course, you know how important the frontal lobe is. It's in all of our decision making. It's for emotions. It's for executive functioning. It's for planning. It's for all of that stuff. So imagine taking antipsychotics and that part of your brain doesn't function the way that it should. Or how about, how about seeing patients who are so restless, they can't sit down. They want to kill themselves from the akathisia from the antipsychotics. That's another fun side effect. If you Google that one, you can see patients online on YouTube who have akathisia so bad they don't know what to do. And sometimes it can be permanent. Or you could talk about tardive dyskinesias, all these different facial and jaw movements we see, these disfiguring facial and jaw movements, this rocking in the chair, this squirming of people, this tongue protrusion we see. And the rest of your life, you're going to be sitting there with your face doing something like this and imagine what that does to your jaw one time i chewed gum for a whole 12 hour shift the next day i had kind of lock jaw is what i would call it but some sort of temporal mandibular tmj whatever that stands for but i had some sort of dysfunction going on in this to where i could barely open my jaw and it really hurt so i can't imagine doing this 
all day, every day until I die and what that would do to my joints or just squirming, the rocking, the moving. It's gotta be very, very painful. Or how about the fact that every manufacturer of every antipsychotic drug has at one point been successfully found guilty of fraudulent activity related to their medications. Zyprexa, for instance, the manufacturers knew that it caused diabetes. They hid that information. They completely omitted it. Risperidone, the manufacturers knew that that caused lactation. Little boys were lactating out of their nipples. All of these drug manufacturers hide all of this stuff from the public. They settle for millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. It's to them just kind of the cost of doing business. So I don't know about you, but how safe would you feel knowing that you're taking a medication from a manufacturer who has deliberately omitted, who has cherry-picked patients, who has hidden data so that they can sell, so that they can be more profitable. How safe would you feel taking this medication? Or imagine hearing the horror stories of people who are so impacted, people who are so constipated, people who have fecal matter that is stuck in their colon. Their, their fecal matter is like a brick that they have to go to the hospital and they have to have it surgically removed. And imagine during that removal, people taking out feet and feet of brick-like constipation because the patient hasn't had a bowel movement for, in forever and they're complaining of horrid stomach pain. And then imagine because of this surgery, they just had to remove part of your intestine and now you're on a bag for the rest of your life. Your poop is coming out in a bag. You have to clean that bag every day. That bag is with you no matter where you go. Imagine trying to be intimate with someone and you've got this poop bag that's attached to your side. Imagine you're started on clozapine, a very popular antipsychotic medication. Your resting heart rate is 70 beats per minute. And now in clozapine, it's anywhere from about 95 to 105. Every single minute of every single day, your heart is beating 25 to 35 more beats per minute. If you do the math, you'll realize your heart is having to work so much harder every day just to handle that kind of medication. So you can imagine the stress cardiovascularly that you would be experiencing being on clozapine. Imagine having to have your blood drawn every freaking week for the first six months from taking that kind of medication. Imagine having to get finger stuck four times a day because you're on Zyprexa, because you're on Risperidone, and now you've got diabetes. Imagine just experiencing life in a very apathetic way. You just don't care anymore. And you don't care that you don't care. That's how blunted you are. We had a patient come in on an admission unit. Very intelligent guy. Very smart. I remember having a conversation with him, and he asked me, he said, Nick, I'm upset because people are telling me that I'm crazy. I don't believe that I'm crazy. And he said, how would you feel? Something along these lines. He said, how would you feel if people told you you were crazy, but you didn't believe you were crazy? And I said, yeah, I'd feel pretty upset. The same guy told staff he was going to kill him because they disrespected him. And part of his culture is to lash back when people disrespect him. I don't think he was really going to kill him, but he made the verbal threat. So they started him on Zyprexa, an emergency medication. I saw him about three, four months later on another unit. I hadn't seen him for a while. Had I not known him, had I not had that conversation with him, I would have thought he was maybe a little mentally retarded. Started. That's how blunted the medication made him. He had probably gained about 20 pounds. He and I walked out to the courtyard. We walked around. We had a conversation. The conversation was not the same. Just very slow, very lethargic, slow to respond. You could tell his mind wasn't working as quickly as it should. That's antipsychotic medication. Imagine working in an adolescent unit where you see adolescents taking these same medications, 12 year olds on Zyprexa. They're not psychotic. Psychosis doesn't even show up at that age. They're traumatized. They have tons of trauma. They have neglectful parents. We had one patient that I worked with become a man after he killed someone at the age of 12 with a shotgun. His dad celebrated this death. His dad celebrated this murder. His dad told him he was a man after that. He's 12 and he's tatted up in gang signs. He's not psychotic. He comes from a broken household, but he started on an antipsychotic medication. So imagine seeing kids with that same blunted affect. These are supposed to be spontaneous, fun, imaginative kids, and they're just blunted. I suppose in all fairness, though, I have seen some people clear up on antipsychotic medication. They're few. It's probably maybe 5-10% of people when it's just a drastic change and maybe 10% is a little overestimation. It's probably more like 5% of people where you'll see this drastic change, this huge improvement in their baseline cognitive functioning. I had one patient come in and this is literally how he would talk. Oh yeah, I went over there to jump out of the window so I could see the sky of the blue moon that was down near the dog's tail and he would run around upside down with the board that was coming from the basement and he saw this other kind of dark complex. That's exactly how he would talk and I'm not even capturing it that well because I'm just coming up with the stuff off the top of my head. He was much more convincing, but incoherent, but all of the syntax of a sentence was fine. Everything made sense, but it didn't make sense, if that makes sense. For two weeks, this guy was talking like that up, wasn't sleeping whatsoever. Who knows if his psychosis was caused by insomnia? I have no idea. I started him on Zyprexa, and two days he was cleared up. He could speak coherently. He even remembered speaking incoherently and said, I don't know what that was about. Now, I don't know if that's because Zyprexa gave him some sort of restorative sleep, but I will say it 
probably most definitely had to have been the Zyprexa. I just think what else could have it been that cleared him up? Had another patient in the state hospital. He walked in, thought that he owned the place, literally thought he owned the entire hospital. He got pissed when he came in because he saw his employees, which were people like me, sitting down just watching people in the day hall. And he said, why aren't you guys getting to work? This guy legitimately believed that. It's, it's, not, it's not a joke. It might seem like a joke if you don't work in behavioral health, but you have these patients with these crazy delusions. And that was his delusion. Like he owned the whole place. This, this went on for two, three weeks. We were given him Zyprexa. Nothing was happening. Well, that's because he was cheeking the medication, spitting it in the trash, whatever. So then we started to mouth check him. I would walk with him out on the floor and I would say, hey, Greg, not his real name, of course. I just want to make sure you're taking this Zyprexa. I'd walk and I'd sit with him. He took ODT, an orally disintegrating tablet. Eventually, we knew that he was getting the medication. In two or three days, he, he cleared up. He slept for a, a very long time and then he cleared up. He was like, man, I don't know what was going on with me. I could have a clear and coherent conversation with him. He wasn't pissed off. He was relatively normal. And he even remembered having these delusions. He's like, yeah, I don't know what happened. I just thought everybody here was my employee and I was the boss of this place and no one was doing their job. That's, that is what he told me. Very cool guy, by the way, especially when he cleared up on his medication. Unfortunately, these kind of cases are sort of few and far between, but I just think it's important. As much as I personally don't like antipsychotic medication and I find it overall disagreeable, at the same time, I'm glad we have it and I have seen patients clear up from it. And there's been times when I feel like, man, it really felt necessary. It really felt necessary. Sometimes you get patients who are so aggravated and pissed off. They, it's scary. It's absolutely scary. So I'm glad we have antipsychotic medication. I just generally think it's way overused and is very unsafe. And of course, it needs to be used with probably a lot more discretion. I think antipsychotic medication is kind of a convenient solution for a chronic problem that our society has, which is this, this kind of rampant mental illness. We live in a world that is vastly different from a world we were meant to live in. We have people who just have generational trauma upon trauma upon trauma, and people call it genetic. It's not genetic. It's just trauma upon trauma upon trauma. And the, the convenient thing, the easy thing to do is just to medicate people. It's to sedate them. That is an easy way to control behavior, not to give them therapy. Therapy is too expensive. It's too costly. It's too, it's too time consuming. You need more staff. And so antipsychotic medication, I think, is really just sort of a convenient way to handle people's mental disturbance.